All right, guys, it's 6.16 p.m. September 16th, 2017. All right, I got some info I want to share with you. Uh, first of all, as I'm sure a lot of you know, um, Jose is still a Category 1 storm. Uh, the barometric pressure has dropped a little bit, um, not uh, too much to the point where uh, we think it's going to jump into a serious Category 2 storm. So I want to say that right off the bat. We're still at 80 mile an hour sustained winds. Um, another thing going on is, uh, I'm sure a lot of you know this as well, uh, Maria has been upgraded to a tropical storm. Uh, we basically knew that was going to happen. They gave it a 100% chance uh, basically throughout today. Um, that was uh, pretty obvious. And um, right away, guys, they've been saying that this storm is going to be a very significant storm just by the um, how low it is, uh, how quickly it's forming, and its uh, current track, which I'm going to show you in a second. Um, this is also pretty interesting. Uh, Tropical Storm Lee. Um, earlier spaghetti models and reports had Lee basically forming, and then most of the models had it hooking out back towards Africa uh, because of a low pressure deal going on here on this side of the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, making more of the pressure over here, which again, guys, is why these storms tend to uh, ride this western path. Um, they rarely go up in this area because there usually is a constant pressure here. So again, I'm recapping some stuff there, but um, there's been some changes, not only in the GFS, but the Euro models too, and the Euro model really surprised me uh, because a lot of people have been relying on it because it was pretty good with Irma and stuff like that. So uh, right now, here are the current spaghetti models for Jose. Um, some of the models have shifted a little bit east in the last couple hours. They were similar to this in the beginning of the day. Then they basically shifted to the east a little bit, as in direction-wise. And then some of them went back to the west in direction-wise. Um, again, I want you to focus here on this European model. Uh, these are the blue ones here. This is the one that got Irma correct to begin with uh, from the start. Um, as far as the spaghetti models go. Now, if you follow my mouse, we have that blue, the blue line with the boxes in it. Um, this I haven't seen yet. This actually projects it to come up. Uh, this is where the eye, they suspect the eye of the storm would be, guys. So wherever these lines are, whichever model you choose to follow or you trust, uh, basically picture your cone going outside that model. So that kind of puts these areas that we've been talking about and looking at still in the risk for that the major like ocean deals uh, storm surge wind lots of rain stuff like that again subject to change we all know this but again there's something I want to focus on here and that is this European model this model has uh, Jose running up the East Coast uh, getting real close to Long Island almost touching uh, the end of Massachusetts and then it has it hooking back down this way now, if you guys remember a couple days ago, um, the uh, Ventu Sky model actually showed Jose coming up and then wrapping in a circle and then whipping back to the coast again. And um, it, was, it was pretty dramatic. Um, it was a little far out to tell, but again, that's what the data showed. And a lot of this stuff is really interesting how this works and how these things change. Um, I'm going to move on really quick. Here's another version of those models so you can see the European model a little better. Uh, UK, uh, EGRI. Um, these are pretty similar until you get to this point here. UKXI has it going straight out this way, and then the EGRI has that hook coming down. Now I'm tying this into something here, which I'm going to show you. Here are the current spaghetti models for uh, Maria, I believe is how you pronounce it. Uh, a couple of them have dipped. Uh, below the 18 degree north line, which is significant because these are warmer waters, guys. You got to remember that. Uh, we do have a model now that takes it um, over the east side near uh, Cuba and then up through the center of, uh, or excuse me, the southern tip of Florida once again and then going into the Gulf. Again, subject to change. This is why we watch these models. Some of them have them hooking shallow up into the Atlantic. Again, this is why we're watching this storm. And the reason that there's so much emphasis is because of how, sh how quick it's forming. And uh, they basically gave it a guaranteed Category 4 status by the time it gets to this area because of its projected path. All right, that's what the data is showing, guys. Here is the current models for Lee. Now, Lee has made some pretty significant changes in the last couple hours as far as direction-wise. If you guys remember, I was pointing out that most of the models, again, had it hooking back towards uh, the Af uh, African coast, the west side. 
Um, a lot of these models are now shifting to either the middle or they're shifting down lower to catch that west coast type of deal again. So there are changes here and now you can kind of, you're starting, I'm starting to tie these together into the uh, animation models and I'm going to explain that now. Here again is uh, the Maria path. Um, it's pretty straightforward according to the charts, except for a couple of these models are, are bringing it into the Atlantic a little more. But we have a general idea here of where they think this storm's going to go based on the pressures around it. We talk about this a lot. All right, here's our current satellites of Jose, Maria, and Lee. Um, Jose, a very strong spin. We got our bands. Um, they were pointing out, you see these... Uh, these speck clouds here, strip clouds, or whatever they call them, that is a, uh, a sign of a healthy storm. Uh, again, their words, not mine. I'm just pointing these things out for you for those that are learning about this stuff. These are things you look for in healthy hurricanes. That's what this is. That's why we're worried about it possibly being a cat too. Here is Maria uh, forming its very strong spin. Um, they said this thing could be a Category 1 uh, as early as tonight, guys. So we're talking fast, fast... Um, evolution of this hurricane. So this is going to be something to watch. We're going to be talking about this for a while. Uh, then we got Lee here. Lee is looking healthy as well. And now the question with Lee is whether it's going to take this path uh, back towards the east or if it's going to start staying wet or staying on the west uh, movement. We don't know yet. Um, I want you to notice something here too with uh, Maria. Maria and Lee are actually uh, sharing moisture here. You can see this one little band that sticks out that's coming right off of Lee and then it forms connecting to Maria. So I found that interesting. And guys, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking to myself in some of the comments down below of uh, two storms possibly like coming together and forming one. I was doing some research to see if that's ever happened. I think there was one case where it came close to happening. Um, I, maybe the movie The Perfect Storm was based on that. I would have to do a little more research to really find out to give you guys an answer. But again, this, I'm tying this all together. Um, here is where things get pretty interesting. This is the current GFS version of where these storms are projected to go. Now I'm going to run you through this and I want you to notice something about Jose. Jose, um, a couple hours ago, was projected to come up, skim the coast, possibly Jersey, Long Island, Massachusetts, so on and so forth, and then get picked up by the jet stream and carried out. Now check this out. And again, guys, as these storms get closer to landfall, they get more accurate, so you might get used to seeing this type of movement now. I'm bringing this to you because this is what the data is bringing. Uh, you see Jose making its move up. It widens out. The storms usually do this when they hit the cold water. They expand, and it's a, a wider wind area. Uh, not so much as a strong storm, but the wind area is bigger. Um, so that's something to think about, especially for the surf and the coastlines of these areas. Again, skimming very close to Long Island and Massachusetts. And then it comes out, and now check out this movement. It has it coming uh, a little bit east, and then it begins to dip down and wrap back around. Check that out. And at the same time, we have Maria following its very, very uh, beeline path. All the models are agreeing that it's going to take at least this type of path. Once it gets to here, we don't know. That's very far out. But these models are, are really showing something weird. So here is, I'm going to switch over to the ECMWF. And this is where things get super interesting. Um, this might be the first time I've ever seen something like this, especially in models. Keep an eye on Jose. Still following a similar path as the GFC, uh, GFC model. We're moving forward here. Uh, same deal. It is a little more towards the east coast, this version. The European model uh, has made a shift to the east. It's showing a shallower turn once it passes there, but look at that. It makes almost like a U-turn, starts coming back down, and then look at this. These two storms hit each other and then do like a little dance. They start spinning around each other. And I don't know, guys, I just, I've never seen anything like that. Uh, again, subject to change, um, I'm sure this will change, but the fact that we saw this a couple days ago, we saw Jose coming up the coast and then wrapping around a couple days ago, and we kind of put it off because it was far away, but now that the models are coming back to this type of thought, is very interesting. So it's not just the animation models, it's also the spaghetti models starting to show this. If you remember what I just showed you 
Here, the European model has it coming up just like we showed and then hooking down. Now, the reason for this, I want to explain why they think this is happening. I don't want to just leave you guys with these models just by chance. So this is what we have here. I want you to notice this blue area here. It's almost, uh, it's a pressure area. And if you can see this here, it's almost what's pushing Jose towards the coast before it makes its round trip here. But I just want you to see the momentum here. So if we wait for a couple more frames, chances are that momentum is still going to be pushing it this way. Um, yes, it will be hitting the cooler water. It will weaken. There's no doubt about that. That's what happens when they hit the cool water. But just try to get an idea of the flow here. We got this pushing. It's pushing. So just kind of visualize where you think that's going to go. You're going to see Jose spin. It's going to come up in this direction and then start making its hook regardless. We're just looking to see if it's going to touch the coast or not. And that's why we're following this stuff so closely. So guys, we in this in the GFS and the European models on Tropical Tidbits, they literally show these two storms touching each other and dancing around each other. And I waited a little while to even post this to make sure that this wasn't some like one hour glitch or, you know, sometimes these models put out data and then they retract it quickly uh, with new data. But the reason that this is happening, again, is because of the high pressures going on. They're expecting a high pressure to pass over the northern part of the United States. And just as Jose is making its turn, this, this high pressure is going to be flowing to the right of Jose, almost locking it in this area. That's what they thought was going to happen a couple days ago. Then the models changed, but now they're coming back to this. So just I'm going to run this through one more time. Just keep an eye on it. Here's Maria coming right up. It's almost going to pass to the west of the Bahamas in this model. And then look at that. It makes a sharp right turn into the Atlantic, almost as if to meet Jose. They're both meeting parallel to about Georgia and South Carolina, is what the models are showing now. And then they literally do like a dance around each other. Maria passing to the east and Jose making a third pass towards the east coast. Very interesting stuff here. And this is all, this isn't like the models are making this up, guys. This is based on these high pressures. We got high pressure here. That's where the H's are. And then these rings extend how uh, hard the pressure is affecting the area. So you basically think of these as like little force fields. As the rings get smaller and tighter, it's higher pressure. So they're not just making this up. This is based on data around the storms. That's why I always exaggerate the stuff going on around the storms. If not for uh, global winds, guys, these hurricanes would never move and they wouldn't form. So, guys, this is what the data is showing. Uh, Jose is getting very close to land, so the options of where it's going to go are lessening. And they're beginning to agree that this storm is going to rake the east coast here. And then it's going to make a U-turn back into the middle of the Atlantic. The east middle, I should say. This thing will work with me here. And then look at that. Very interesting. Very, very, very interesting. All right, guys, if you want to check this out for yourselves, this is uh, the website is called Tropical Tidbits. You can go to the ECMWF model, and then if you want to change it, you click on Global, and you can change it to the GFS. And guys, the GFS is showing something very similar. Both of these models are showing these two storms possibly merging close to the East Coast. Look at that. Wow. All right, and just to verify, we're going to go to Ventu Sky and see what they have to say about this. We're going to move forward. Here's 17th. Here's the 18th. Here is the 19th. We are our closest to uh, New York, Chesapeake Bay at this point. Here's the 20th. We are still moving north, northeast. And then it makes a movement uh, just to the east, maybe a tad south. And then it does show a little dip here. So this is the Ventu Sky version. Here's the 23rd. Okay, and the 23rd has it carrying out this way. So we have a GFS model on Ventu Sky, one of them showing Jose going out into the jet stream, and then another version of the GFS model on Tropical Tidbits shows Jose wrapping around, doing a U-turn, and then almost meeting with Mariah. And the ECMWF model literally has them touching and dancing around each other. 
Now, I would not be surprised if Ventu Sky updates soon and begins to show this movement. I think Ventu Sky is a little bit behind updates as far as uh, animation graphics go. So, guys, I am going to continue watching this. This is very interesting stuff. Um, this is not for fear. This is what the data is showing, and the data is beginning to agree on this. So it's not just I'm picking one model and saying, oh, here, check this out. I'm showing you what this data is showing, and that's what I always do. I always use the data. I go what's going with with what's going around these storms and that's what's important and just to let you know I do have it set for 1500 meters just so I can see the higher wind patterns because that's what I'm looking at I'm not basing the wind strength of, of landfall or anything like that on these numbers at all because that's not what they're gonna be again this storm's gonna weaken when it gets to the, about this area but then after that is when we need to watch because we have a possibility of these two storms hitting each other guys alright you saw it I'm showing it to you and here is our wind models again look at this pressure right here this is what's pressing Jose against the coast and eventually it's showing it pushing underneath it enough to where it swirls around like that alright so that's what we have as far as an update now guys again Jose category one tropical storm Maria tropical storm Lee is starting to show a more of a western path so we're gonna wait and see what happens with that and that's where we're at now, guys. Um, don't be surprised if you see uh, Jose be raised to a Category 2 tonight, possibly tomorrow. I think that might be as, as high as it gets. I don't see it reaching 3 with this amount of space to go. But again, we're going to watch and find out, guys. Thanks a lot for sticking with me. We're going to talk soon tonight. Bye-bye.